everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm the City Witch. So today's video is on the subject of books I recommend for fairy magic and I'm going to divide it into two sections. So the first books I'll show you and talk to you about are ones that I recommend for the lore, the stories and the myths and legends behind fairies and of course the many different varieties of fairies that are out there from all over the world. And then the second collection of books I'm going to show you are ones that you can get for practicing magic, working spells and rituals with fairies and incorporating the fae into your everyday magical practice. I will score the books from 1 to 10 as always and let you know my personal opinion. I'll give you a sneak peek at the book itself and the content and hopefully I'll be able to give you some recommendations on whether I think the book is useful or good. Now all these books I've read and I've, many of them I've had for a long time and some of them I refer to time and time again so I might be a little bit biased on these ones guys. Fairy Magic is something I've been doing for a very long time. Um, I think roughly now about 20 years I've been working with fairies so a lot longer than I've been working with dragons and dragon magic but I prefer dragons and dragon magic if I'm honest but I do like working with the fae, I like incorporating them in my everyday craft and there's loads of simple techniques for doing that and they teach you that in these books. So let's have a look at the books shall we? So the first one I'm going to talk to you about are the myths and legends books that I recommend and the first one in that collection is called The Fairy Bible, it's by Teresa Murray and it looks like this. Now, I picked this up really cheaply, this one, for about a fiver, I think, um, in one of those cheap bookstores that are dotted about in the UK. But full price, it's 12 99 and I know currently you can buy it on Amazon for about seven quid, so not too expensive if you're interested in getting it, guys. Now, there's several things about this book. It's from a collection known as the Bible Collection, and there's quite a few of these. There's the Wiccan Bible, the Spell Bible, uh, Meditation Bible, all the Crystal Bibles from 1, 2, and 3, and so on and so forth. And there's quite, like I say, a big collection, and this is one of the ones in that. They select the writers based on their expertise in a certain field, and this was no exception. This They chose a fantastic writer. The content is really informative. The way it's laid out is really clever. I really enjoyed it. And I'll just show you the content now while I'm on that subject. So you get a full introduction to the book and the writer. The realm of the fairies, water fairies, air fairies, fire fairies, earth fairies, house and hearth fairies, flower fairies, tree fairies, weather fairies, a dictionary of fairies, and an index and some acknowledgements as well. And then throughout the book, you get these really nice images like that and the beautiful colour artworks in here I mean they're just really nice guys I really like them and all the stories are great this this would be a fab book for kids honestly I read this to my nieces and nephews and they've really enjoyed it and it's great for looking up some information about fairies and how they connect to animals and the different stories so yeah just just some really nice stuff in this guys and there's things in it that I didn't know before I mean there's towards the back of the book there's a couple of really interesting things so you get stuff like that for an example so you do get the odd spell and some meditations and some practices throughout the book and there's some little snippets of information from the author as well as you go through and then the dictionary helps you find fairies that you're looking up for research purposes so I do really like that about the book. Now, if you're a parent and you have young kids, you're considering introducing them to the craft or anything magical. Fairy magic is an excellent way to do that, and this book would be a good introduction to that. All the artwork in it is pretty cartoony, so appealing to a child, really pretty and colourful. The stories in it are great, they're not scary or anything. So, yeah, really good book, guys, really good writer enjoyed it read it from cover to cover couldn't put it down at the time i thought it was brilliant i still refer to it now and i like that it's got little pieces of information in it from a magical perspective as well so even though it's more of a historic story mythological book it's still got spells and rituals and some odd recipes as you go throughout the book which are really nice so i would easily score this a 10 out of 10 i think it's quite a nice rounded book and the writer's is really good so yeah 10 out of 10 for me guys so the next book I'm going to talk to you about is called The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Fairies and it's by Anna Franklin and it looks like this. Now this is a really heavy book guys and it's quite thick and it's very weighty. Um, it's not something you carry around in a handbag or anything. Um, I can't show you the content of this one or even talk to you about it because it doesn't have a content. What it does is it gives you an introduction and then it literally just lists all fairies from all around the world from A to Z doesn't give you an index so you can't find anything in it which is really annoying so it's not very easy to navigate it has this really bizarre artwork in it that kind of looks like that um, the artwork is very modern very digital and um, very fake so not 
that great to look at. There's the odd piece, which is all right, but most of it I think is very strange and peculiar looking. I mean, I actually really like that one, but there's, there's some others that are really, yeah, just not great to look at, to be honest. I don't use this book anymore, um, but this was the first one I had when I was researching fairies and looking for one that would give me myths and legends on them. And I came across this in, like I said, a random store, so I bought it. It wasn't expensive at the time. I'm not sure how much it would be now. Um, let's see. So $14.99, it is in full price for uh, English money, and it actually says for USA uh, $19.95. So, you know, roughly speaking, it's a good 20 quid, guys. And considering it doesn't have an index or any way to navigate it, I, I think that's pretty poor. It makes it very difficult to use. And for somebody who is researching a fairy and they don't actually know what the fairy is or what it's called, you'd have to read it from cover to cover to find out what you're looking for, which that's very long-winded, very time-consuming. Who's got time for that? Because I haven't. <laughs> so it does lose a lot of points, but the information is good. The writing style is good. I wasn't bored when I read it. But I hated the artwork. The artwork was really ugly, if I'm honest. It's not my style. Um, and I say, not easy to navigate. So I wouldn't score this very high personally. It would probably be like a four or a five out of ten. Not a great score. But it was the first one I bought. I still have it in my collection because it's alright to reference it and go through it. But ultimately, not a book I use anymore because I have this one, which is much better and easy to navigate. So yeah, about a five out of ten, guys. So the next book I have in my collection is by a very known, famous artist. He worked on a lot of really amazing movies and, you know, cartoons and really popular mythical kind of movies. So you might, you're going to recognise the writer as, you know, and the artist as soon as I say his name, to be honest. Um, it's Brian Freud. And as we know, Brian Freud worked on things like Fraggle Rock Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, and he's a very well-known, famous artist here in the UK. Um, his son and, you know, his family have took over from him um, a while back, and they all are artists in their own right. I mean, Wendy Freud, his wife, does fantastic work. They're just fantastic people, as far as I'm concerned, and going on the website, they're really inspirational. The artwork is great. Um, the way they perceive fairies and some of the information they give you is really out there, but I really like it. Um, the book I'm going to talk to you about, guys, is this one. Uh, it's called Good Fairies, Bad Fairies. And you, you quite literally do that, guys. You flip it. So Good Fairies is the first half of the book. And then when you flip it, so it's upside down, the second half of the book is Bad Fairies, that way up. And I think that's really clever and interesting um, way to do this book. And again, he doesn't give you a content, but I can forgive him for that because in the introduction, he tells you why he doesn't do that. And he does tell you how he perceived all these fairies and how they came to be in his mind. He gives you lots of beautiful imagery of his own doodles and artwork in it as well. And you get full colour images. So I'll show you one now. So as an example, you get stuff like that in it, which again, really appealing to young children, really appealing to artists. Some really fantastic imagery in it. Throughout the book, he tells you how he meditated and connected to the various fairies that are in it tells you how they came to talk to him, how, how they wanted to be discussed and portrayed in the book, which I also found very fascinating. It does talk to you about some of their magical abilities and some of the myth and legends behind some of the specific fairies in this. But there's a lot of fairies in this as well, which aren't famous, which aren't ones like, say, a Puka or Kelpie. He talks to you a lot more about um, fairies that he's particularly worked with over the years and how they look and how... Um, they work with him and their magical abilities and and they're all very odd beings they're not normal fairies you'd find in a myth book but i like that because it lets me know there's more out there lets me know there's more than what we can perceive and he connected to them on a completely different level than some of the other writers did so that's why i enjoyed this book and he also puts in stuff like you know spirits and angels so again you get more information than this um, i'll just flip the book and i'll show you some of the dark ones as well just so you can get an idea of the different images in the book so some really interesting as I say pieces of art in this it's got some nice stories as well so I, I do feel like it's something kids would enjoy overall i loved the book 
I really like the artwork. I like the guy who, who wrote and designed the fairies. I'm a big fan of the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, so this was a fantastic piece to my collection. So if you are a fan of Brian Freud, this is an absolute have book as far as I'm concerned. And the content within makes you see fairies in a completely different light. At one point in the book, he actually talks as well about how fairies aren't always perceived as physical beings, that they're perceived as energy, and therefore he gives them a colour. Um, because they're light and they're you know luminescent and he talks to you about that as well and that's really good so for me this is quite high score i probably easily score this about um oh nine ten out of ten you know quite high because it's a really fun book it's really interesting it's got so much to it and i really like the, the flip <laughs> that appeals to me so yeah I'm, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 guys i do like that book i do think it's worth it um so if you are interested in researching and getting different opinions on fairies and people that have worked with them for a very long time that does give you a completely different perspective so worth it for that alone as far as i'm concerned so we're now going to move on to the books i recommend for actually working with them magically um i only have three books to talk to you about at the moment there would have been a fourth one but i haven't read it yet um, and I will tell you why when I, when I get to that. But um, the first book I want to talk to you about is my all-time favourite book on working with fairies. There's been nothing I've read that's topped this book so far. So if you are interested in getting into fairy magic, this honestly gets that's a full recommendation from me. It's fantastic. It's called A Fairy Treasury by Jackie Newcomb. And it looks like that. And honestly, it doesn't look like much, but guys, honestly, this is packed full of information. It's got its own bookmark as well. And it, it's, it's just great. So I'll read you the back and then I'll read you the content. So the back of the book, it says, read amazing real life stories of contact with fairies from folks all around the world. And that was great, guys. Really, really interesting to read. Didn't get bored at all. Learn about fairies and trees favoured by little people and the best oils, crystals and candle colours to encourage fairies into your magical space. So again, giving you lots of correspondences to do with fairies. Use the remarkable A to Z reference to find out which fairies are good and of course which are just plain naughty. So again, cheeky take on that, but I like it. Discover the fairies' secret hideouts. Find out how to turn your home and garden into a magical fairy space and have fun with magical fairy crafts. So there's some interesting things you can design and make in this book as well. So again, great for if you've got kids or a young family. So the content, there's, there's a lot to the content, so I'll quickly run through it. So you get the birth of the fairy treasury, like how the book came to be and the different writers that worked on it. A little note on our spelling of fairy and why we chose to spell it that way. And then the chapters go from 1 to 18. So you've got frequently asked questions about fairies. The fairy Almec, fairy names A to Z, the meaning of fairy names, the hierarchy of fairies, the king and queen of the fae, fairy godmothers, fairies and their law fairies in culture and religion, fairies in our lives, fairies and children, fairy land, fairies and how we can help them and fairy transformations and guided fairy meditations and waving your fairy wand, communicating with fairies. And then she does give you information about the authors, a, a fairy reference dictionary that she recommends and then some recommended reading as well. And again, like I said, there's so much information in this book. And actually where the bookmark is for me is the meditations. I actually do an awful lot of work in this book when it comes to the meditations. But it's an easy way to connect to the fairies. It's an easy way to continue working with them and incorporate them into my life. And a lot of the stuff I did learn from this, like meeting my fairy godmother, which apparently everybody is born with a fairy godmother, which I didn't know about. That was really interesting. There was stuff in this about how to build a fairy altar, how to do little things around your home that welcome fairies in. Like one of the things I learned from this book that I didn't know beforehand was you know, you should always keep a window cracked open because if your house is shut off to fairies, it means that they're unwelcome, whereas keeping a window open allows fairies to come in and be welcome in your space. And then you should leave offerings for them. It teaches you all about those offerings. Um, there's stuff in this as well for creating magical items such as your wand from scratch. So if you're someone that has kids or, a, say, a young family, you can actually make a wand with them and work with them on the little arts and crafts that are in this. So this is fantastic for incorporating children into your craft and working with them as a family. So I loved it for that reason. 10 out of 10 from me, guys. Fantastic book. So the next book I'm going to talk to you about, again, is another really good book. And I read this after I read The Fairy Treasury. And um, this probably comes a very close second, if not matching the other one, because the content, again, is really good. And it's The Book of Fairy Magic by Lucy Cavendish. And it looks like that. And it, again, really beautiful artwork on this book, guys. And again, I'll read you what it says on the back and then I'll read you a bit about the content. 
So it says, work with the fairies for health and happiness. Be granted the seven magical gifts of the fae. Meet different fairies from all around the world. Learn the legends, laws and history of the little people. Visit the planet's most sacred fairy sites. Discover the magic properties of fairy flowers, herbs and trees. Plant your own enchanted garden and brew intoxicating potions. Host a magical tea party and bake fairy treats. Become an eco-fairy and make the world a better place. Hear from famous fairy artists, writers, healers and singers and find out what kind of fairy you are and much, much more. And trust me guys, there, there is much, much more in this book than that. So content wise and, you know, working through it chapter wise, there's so much to do. So chapter one, the fairy questions answered. Chapter two, working with fairies. Chapter three, working with the fairies and connecting with them. Chapter four, history of the fae. Chapter five, court of the fae. Chapter six, sacred fairy sites. Uh, chapter seven, fairies from all around the world. Chapter eight, magical gardening. Chapter nine, becoming an eco fairy. Chapter 10, playing with the fairies. And chapter 11, getting crafty with the fae. Chapter 12, speaking with the fairies. Chapter 13, the seven magical gifts. And chapter 14, what kind of fairy are you? So there, there was a lot to work in in this book, guys. And throughout the whole book, you get these cute little images in it as well. So I'll just show you. So ones like that, where when they speak to other authors and practitioners, you get like little cute stuff like that. They're all decorated, the, pa the pages, which is really nice. Little artwork like that. So there's some really cute stuff in this that I really enjoyed. I really liked that they worked with lots of other authors from all around the world they gave you lots of information as well there's stuff on moon magic the wheel of the year and how to look at things completely differently with the fairies than if you're a wiccan so if you just want to practice fairy magic only and you know not be any other practitioner it teaches you how to do that there's lots of stuff in this um one of the things i picked up on that i liked from this was baking cookies with flowers that were edible and how to identify those that was really good as well so you could have really nice magical tea parties with edible flowers it was it was great guys really enjoyed it so again this would be really high an eight or a nine out of ten from me really good one to have in your collection a good one to work with children and young adults and an easy one to get into if you're trying trying to work with fairies and all of the examples they give from other practitioners around the world was nice as well i mean i wasn't bored reading any of the content and any of the stories of their experiences it was really fun so yeah definitely an eight out of ten guys fantastic book so i wouldn't have included this book in this particular video only i finished it before christmas and it is a book on fairy magic apparently um i didn't like this book but i'm going to incorporate it because you guys out there might like it better than i did so it's called betwixt and between and it's exploring the fairy tradition of witchcraft by storm fairy wolf and it looks like this now this wasn't the book that i wanted to read he has another book out and i wanted to get that one and i did and then when i started it, it actually told me that i had to read this one first um, because of the exercises in this one aren't in the other one but you need to know them from this in order to read the other one and work through it apparently so in a panic state I went out and got this one I read it and hated it <laughs> um, so this was actually a waste of money as far as I was concerned um, as I say in all honesty you guys might enjoy this but I didn't so reading the back just to let you know what he says is involved in the book so he says creating an altar summoning the fairy fire engaging the shadow exploring the personal trinity purifying the primal soul working with the iron pentacle aligning your life force developing spirit alliances journeying between the worlds exploring air fire water and earth enhancing fairy powers so a lot of that that he says he does on the back he does but in really weird ways um as i say i didn't enjoy his writing style um i found him quite dull when i was reading it i really struggled with his style if i'm honest but i'll let you know what the content is so part one preparing for your journey so he has the origins of fairy tradition where he covers like the history of the fae and common traditions in fairy craft opening the way so beginning your fairy path so traditional fairy altar how to open your way and your personal temples summoning the fairy fire so the breath of life the life force of food um, i did like the life force and food section that was really good he talked to you about energies of food that's alive and dead and how consuming certain foods can be good or bad for you and that was really interesting uh, personal trinity so the metal soul the primal soul and the holy daemon 
purification work. So the fires are purity and the waters are purity. The witches forge the warriors will and the iron pentacle now the iron pentacle was a really weird concept to me um we know that in witchcraft the pentacle represents the five elements of earth air fire and water and then spirit or ether in this he talks to you differently he calls it an iron pentacle which i find to be a contradiction iron is as we know historically fairies are very allergic to iron so i don't know why he calls it that and his description and reasons for that i disagreed with completely and then he talks to you about the points of the, the iron pentagram representing something completely different to witchcraft. And what he says for that is sex, pride, self, power and passion. And he does go through all that with you. But again, I didn't agree with anything he said. I thought it was terrible and didn't like it at all. Part two, the hidden powers. So the hidden temple of air. Under that, you get the magical singing, magic of scent guardian beast of air sylphs the wand the watcher of air the flower maiden and the blue god the hidden temple of fire so candle magic movement and dance guardian spirit of fire salamanders the blade the watcher of fire and the horned god the, te the hidden temple of water so baths and springs the guardian beast of water undines the chalice the watcher of water and the great mother chapter 10 the hidden temple of earth so herb stones and curios the power of place, the guardian spirit of earth, gnomes, the cube, the watcher of earth, the dark god and the hag. And then chapter 11, the hidden temple of ether. So he talks about divination and the crossroads, the mirror, the cauldron, the watchers of ether above and below, and then sex magic. And then chapter 12, the heart and the pearl. So the pearl pentacle. So here he talks about love, law, knowledge, power, wisdom, and the black heart of innocence. And then in part three of the book, he talks about journeying between worlds. So he gives you the middle world, which is the middle world, another word on formal versus informal practice, creating personal triggers, the 13 planes of progression and the fairy tree. Chapter 14, the underworld. Now this section was probably the only section I really, really enjoyed 100%. Um, the underworld journey, the Sayum, the feast of the dead, ancestor reverence, the ancestor altar, the mighty dead, the grand master's chair, pentacle, um, the Beltane fairy reed and the traditional prohibitions. And then chapter 15, the overworld. So here he talks about connecting to celestial beings, the celestial sphere, drawing down the moon and star goddesses he does give you lots of appendices to work with other resources and reading and an index as well so there's a lot of information in this book but i didn't enjoy one half of it if i'm honest um personal preference and opinion didn't like his writing style for a lot of what he said in this was hokum he talked an awful lot about this secret fairy organization that he was part of and i did a lot of research couldn't find anything on it when you know like i said i've had this since last year so there might be stuff now but when i researched couldn't find anything he said nothing to back it up no other practitioners claiming they were part of that or you know that this was all true so i actually just felt that he was a magical practitioner that got into a certain point in his life where he decided to make his own path and he put it into a book and i would have preferred him to say that that he's inventing a new path a new new way of doing things rather than claim he's part of this organization which no one can prove so i was a little bit uh, about that um i say i didn't like his writing style um didn't agree with one half of what he said in this book and the things i did enjoy were very few and far between so overall i feel like i wasted my money it wasn't a cheap book it cost me about 18 pound so fairly expensive to get my hands on so I'm hoping the second book that I mentioned, the reason that I bought this is, is better than this because that's about connecting more to underworld magic using witchcraft. So less of the fairy stuff and much more about witchcraft. So yeah, so I'll let you know if I enjoy the other one, but this one I kind of didn't. But it is a book on fairy magic. He does talk about fairies and connecting to them in different ways. He does work with them in the book and he does talk about this unique system of fairy magic, which none of the others did. And as I say, I can't, I can't verify anything he said in this, if I'm honest, because this is such a new book. But if you guys read it, let me know what you thought. I personally didn't enjoy it. But again, it's personal preference. What I don't enjoy, you might. So give it a whirl and yeah, and let me know what you think. But from my perspective and what I read and the content and everything, I would score this very, very low, like a four. I really didn't enjoy it. And actually, I think I'm probably going to sell it or give it away. So um, yeah, so if anyone wants to buy it off me, guys, I'll, I'll sell it to you because I didn't enjoy it. So yeah so that's me done guys i don't have any more books that i would particularly recommend at this time 
there are not enough books out there on fairy magic as far as I'm concerned, but a lot on the myths and laws behind fairies. So I'm hoping more writers will do more on the subject. And if you are interested, there are a lot of fairy oracles out there that help you connect to fairies as well. They help you do really nice meditations and some of them actually come with little meditation exercises as well. So it's worth getting into that. So as always, if you like the video, give me that all important thumbs up. Click the bell button so you know when my next video is coming out because YouTube is, is shocking for that. <laughs> and if you have any questions or queries, then please leave a comment below. And if you don't already know, guys, you can support me on all my social media, which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, Patreon. And I much appreciate all your support, guys. So thank you very much for that. If you'd like to book any of my services or any of my um, magical experience for mentoring, then you can do that through my Facebook page, which as I say, the link is in the description. And thank you very much. As always, take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Blessed be. And I'll see you later.